Hi, my name is Newell Davis with World Composting, and today we're going to do an update on our Vermabag Max. Now, it's been 19 days since our last update, so we're a little bit short of that three-week time period. We put in a lot of food last time, and we're going to see how these worms have done with it. Now, these are the red wigglers that I have, the standard worms that most people get when they first start composting. And they've done a great job of turning through food pretty quickly in the three to four weeks that we're doing before. But we're going to go ahead and add a couple of massive containers here to this and see how, see how they do as we start shortening that time period down and see how they can catch up to it basically and expand their numbers to be able to go through more and more food as we go through this system. So with that, let's go take a look at the system and see how it's doing. All right, so we've got the Verma Bag Max right here. I do have my hose, or I should say hose, my uh, shop vac ready to go with the, the hose or attachment right here. I'm going to open it up at this corner. I'm going to turn the shop vac on, and we're going to see if we see any fruit flies in here. I did take out, I don't know if you remember last time, but my uh, little fruit fly trap was um, needed to be refreshed. I never refreshed it until just now. And we're going to put that back in at the end. But there could be some fruit flies in here. So I really want to make sure that they don't get out and all over my house. So I'm going to vacuum them up as we're going here at the beginning. So I'm going to turn on my shop vac. And we're going to get going and opening this system. So I just want to point out in here, um, there's one fruit fly over here to the side. Um, I only saw one actually when I opened it. Now, okay, now there's a couple more flying out here. But um, all this, as you can see underneath here, let me just zoom in just a little bit here. So if you look over here, you see that big pile of stuff right here. That is actually uh, dead springtails, I think. So I've got a pile here, a pile over here you know, some over here, but there's a whole lot of them in here. And I'm just going to go ahead and dump those into the system and let them kind of work their way through. I'm going to turn this back on. Though. I'm seeing some fruit flies come up from the sides now. So thankfully there wasn't too many in there. I'm going to go ahead and move this off to the side. And really, there wasn't a lot of fruit flies. I was really worried about it since we had, uh, you know, really when I had added all this stuff, I didn't leave the cup in there. So let me grab my glove. We can dig in here. Let me just hold on. Let me move the shot back out of the way. There we go. So let's dig in here a little bit and take a look. And see how we're doing here. Just this top level here. Because remember, we're just doing these top feedings now. We're not doing all these feedings all through the system. We can see here, they started working at these coffee grounds, but not fully. Let me just zoom in just a little bit, tad more. There we go. So right here, we've got the coffee grounds. There's, these aren't broken down quite as much. You can see the pot worms on them, though, especially right there. Just a ton of pot worms on them. But I always see that with coffee grounds. I never really worry about it. It takes a little longer for these to break down when they're, they're wrapped up like that. This looks like it might have been an apple or something. Again, a whole bunch of, looks like springtails or potworms on it. I think these are springtails or something that's all over this piece right here. Hopefully you can see that. I can't tell if it's focusing or not. But definitely some other composters in here. There's a lot of, um, it looks like springtails. I want to say it's potworms, but it's really hard to tell. They look a little like some other type of bug. There we go. Maybe this would be a good one to show on right here. So I'm not sure what those are. Am I, I don't have eyes good enough. I'll have to look at this in the back end right there. But uh, there's, it looks like there's a springtail, but there's stuff that's smaller. It almost looks like mites, but it's not really mites. I can't tell what they are, but I don't think they're, they're bad. But look at this. Let's just dig down right here. Just look at this. Layer, car, there's cardboard on top, worms in the cardboard, and then there's material down below. So you got the cardboard, the material, and the worms are starting to move through that cardboard because they've eaten all the food in here, it looks like. So let's just kind of go over here. 
to this side. Again, we got these uh, coffee grounds in here, just like my uh, urban worm bag. Sorry, I've seen fruit flies here, so I'm just trying to kill those as they come out, or fungus gnats, or whatever they are. And this has a slight citrusy smell to it, so it's not, it doesn't smell bad at all, but look at this. You can just see, look at all the worms in there. You can really see how well the system is doing. You can just see there's just tons and tons of worms in here. They look great, nice and healthy. I got one of these avocado shells in here, and these just take forever to break down. So we'll leave that in there. Look at this. You can just see the worms are really layering into this now as they get into this cardboard. You can see nice, healthy worms. They're really, really liking the setup that we're doing here. Let's just dig in the center section here. Now look at this. Oh my gosh. All right. Look at this. You can just see, I mean, it's almost a worm ball here with how many worms are in the center section. Look at this. Right in there. I mean, they're really working at this system and at this material. I can get, it smells very citrusy, actually. Um, but you can see, I mean, there's just a ton of worms here on the top. Um, so they're doing a great job on this material. I'm really impressed. And uh, just a reminder, if you're looking to purchase one of these, I do have links down below um, to some off sites. If you go to my World of Compost site, there's links for the Verma bag on there and the Urban Worm bag and some other stuff that I also have on Amazon that uh, you know might be worthwhile for those looking to get into this compost. And this system though, it works really, really well. I especially like the fact that it has the mesh lid on it because it makes it a little bit easier to control moisture, especially as it gets into summer. I'll be able to uh, change up my feeding style and really make sure that they are... Uh, you know, that it's able to evaporate that moisture off, you know, from it. Now, here we go. Here's something right here. This is a tea bag. As you can see, this is not quite dissolved yet, but I have found that these do break down, but I keep finding them right now, but I think they take a lot longer. I think they have some sort of wax coating on them, so they take more time to break down, but we'll just continue to watch in here and see if that, that disappears, uh, or if we find it when we uh, harvest, which we might harvest next time we... Uh, we go to do this. I think we're going to harvest both the urban worm bag and then we'll come the next day and harvest uh, the verma bag as well from the bottom to just kind of clear some of it out. Although look how much room we have I and mean, we have a good eight inches here of, you know, of depth that I can still work with. So it's not too bad right now, but I don't want to get it too deep before it gets uh, really compact. I mean, this is pretty heavy as it is. I mean, it probably weighs uh, upwards of 50 to 70 pounds. It's hard to say um, without me really trying to pick it up fully, but it's probably, it's pretty heavy. So with that, let's add an, um, as you can tell, all the worms are buried down now, so we can go ahead and add our food. At least most of them, we'll throw that guy over there. Most of them have buried down in here, but we're gonna, well, I'll put in a little bit of dry cardboard just as a protection, but we're gonna add two massive containers of frozen food. So I'm just gonna spread just a little bit of cardboard on here, not a whole lot, just a little bit, just to kind of maybe elevate everything off of the uh, the bedding that's there. I should me back this up just a tad. Whoops. There we go. Now you can see a little bit more of the system. And now, well, actually, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and add some crushed crab and eggshell. I've been trying to add a whole lot to these systems lately. There we go. And now let's go ahead and add our first thing of food. As I said, I've got these massive containers here. They are ready. Look at that. Big container of food, ready to go. And this one has a lot of different stuff in it as well. We've got some lettuce. Of course, we've got our coffee grounds, our banana peels. Thought this would be thought out a little bit more after sitting out for 20, 30 minutes, but we got another tea bag in here. Twinnings tea bag, coffee. Rip these coffee bags apart a little bit. I think that really helps out when I start ripping them apart. There we go. Of course, more banana peels. Go through a lot of bananas in my house. I should at some point post the juicing recipe that I use because I juice or uh, blend, I should say, very frequently and blend bananas up and have a fruit smoothie. I do juice as well, but that's typically uh, 
when I juice, that's more veggies than fruit. Apple in here. We got some carrot tops. Got some strawberry tops in here. So this is a good mixture of stuff. Just kind of mixing this, moving this around a little bit. I'll have to take these out a little bit earlier next time. I thought that they've been out long enough to thaw out a little bit more than this. Although most of it came off. There we go. Okay, that's one. Now they already went through two the last time, so they're they're really moving through this food. I think this works really well to, to layer it like this. And we've got another container right here. Hold on, there's a little bit of ice in here. I'm just gonna get the ice out of here. There we go. So look at that. We're going to put in another large quantity of food in here. This one has some apple cores, coffee grounds. It looks like we have some Brussels sprout pieces in here, some grapes, grape stem. These take a while to break down, but they will break down in a system. So we, I tend to throw them in here, even though they take a while. More avocado shell and an avocado pit. Actually, well, this is frozen. I can kind of crunch this apart a little bit in here. Might help it break apart a little faster. Those are easy to break apart when they're frozen like that. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Of course, banana. I will say for coffee grounds, everybody, when I used to go into the office, um, I work from home now, but uh, I used to actually take the coffee grounds from my office. I never made coffee there, but when somebody would make coffee, I'd quickly grab the coffee grounds and throw them in a container and bring them home and compost them. But now that I'm home all the time, I make coffee at home for, and actually I should say I drink tea and my wife drinks coffee. So I make her a cup of coffee every morning and I have my tea. But yeah, you can, you can try to get this stuff from your office as well if you're going into work. There's a little bit of celery in here too. This is a big feeding. So these were big containers, they were filled. And here we go, these are some of my loose tea grounds on the bottom here. These are, um, I think, chamomile and orange. They're frozen together pretty well here. Definitely have to take these out a little bit sooner. I thought, really thought that they were going to thaw out a little bit more than they did. All right, I'll put this off to the side here. That looks like a pretty good feeding for this, uh, this time. So we can peel this paper back a little bit. And I think what happens also, just so you know, is that, you know, with these large feedings like this, this does tend to have like a layer of heat and then it breaks down. But now what do we need to do? We need to add some paper. We already put the, I'm going to put a little bit of dry paper on here because um, I think there's a little bit too much water in the, the container this time. So I'm going to add just a little bit of dry paper on here just to soak up that extra water. Just a little layer right there in the center. But again, I've got my container here. This is just a nice big container. There's water in the bottom and uh, it's been soaking up this paper. So let me just mix this up just a little bit more. Kind of make sure all the, all the paper is wet in here. That's the whole purpose of this container is to just kind of get everything nice and wet. And uh, now let's go ahead and pour this in here. See how it's kind of clumping together a little bit. The idea behind this is to just make sure that we got a nice layer of moisture on top, kind of get everything mixed in here. You can see that this is dripping wet right now. That's why I kind of wanted the uh, some dry paper in there because I will have to get all the moisture out of here. And I could, I could, I guess I could add some more paper in here to kind of soak up that moisture. Actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to add just a little bit more paper into this container. Soak up this moisture. There we go. Hear that moisture in there. Let's get all this paper wet. Make sure we cover this nice and well. And we'll just pour the rest of this out. All right, and by the way, I just try to make sure I get everything out of here, or everything the best I can out of here. And then I let this dry out so that way it doesn't mold over. There we go. 
and that's it for this system. Looks really good. Got a little bit of paper on top of everything. And that should be really good for the worms to work up into. And as I said, I mean, it was 19 days and they basically crushed the food that was in here. So let's put that top back on. Cover this back up. Just like that. And by the way, I do put this top on it. There's, there's gaps on the sides to let air out, but this just kind of keeps that moisture in this system has a tendency to sort of dry out without that. And then this time we are going to put our fruit fly trap in this corner over here. So, and hopefully that'll lure anything in there. That I did refresh that. It's apple cider vinegar and a, a drop of Dawn dish soap and some water. And that'll hopefully any fruit flies that come up, they're going to go in here and get drowned in the uh, solution there. So with that, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And uh, thank you again. And I hope that uh, if you have any, hopefully next week, we're going to harvest this system. I think we are going to harvest this next week. And with that, I'll let you go until next time. Thank you for watching.